All right, hello everybody and welcome back. Another episode of the Survivor Recap done on the Minecraft Minecraft Vanilla server. And guess what? Today we are a couple days before episode 3 will air. And episode 3 is hopefully going to be really good. But before we talk about the recap of episode 2, I want to talk about something that I was shocked was not brought up in this last episode and only because i actually saw a what is that i actually saw a news article and it was an interview done with jeff probst um shortly after episode one actually came out uh so this was pre this last episode airing and pre me making the last recap episode and I actually had forgotten to talk about it in there but I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal because I assumed it would get discussed and discovered and talked about in the Survivor show itself and I'm really shocked that it was not so I don't know if this was a random spoiler that I came across that people were not being expected to know because I haven't seen much talk about it either so if you're not up for a spoiler and i don't even know the truth and validity behind all this but if you're not up for a spoiler go ahead and stop listening right now for just the next couple minutes and uh, maybe i'll throw a timestamp thing up in the uh in the video so that you get to see it but basically i saw an article and it was an interview with jeff probst and it was about the immunity idol and it was amazing and i was kind of disappointed when i read it because i was like I can't believe I just read this thing. It's just like, it's like giving something away. But then I thought it was kind of cool because I started thinking of the different uses for it. And it's about the fact that you can use an idol at the tribal council, either as a standard idol, or you can combine two idols. And if you combine the two idols, you can actually save them and play them after the votes are read meaning essentially it would cost you two idols to guarantee safety like if you had two idols sitting in your pocket and you decided to hold them back because you didn't think that people were going to vote for you and then they randomly did vote for you instead of you just being out with two idols in your pocket you give both those idols in to remain safe granted it costs you two idols instead of one but what are the possibilities and odds of of something like that? I mean, that's going to be... How much of a game changer can that be? How often have we seen people end up coming out with two idols, let alone a couple seasons, at least one season I know of. I think it happened more. Somebody got voted out of the game with multiple idols in his back pocket because he thought he was going to be safe and thought he was going to wait one more and it would carry him on to the end, and it did not. But now they're apparently going to build that into the game, which I find really interesting that I read about this in an interview with Jeff Probst, and they didn't talk about it at all during the first episode, and they haven't talked about it at all during the second episode. And like I said, I read this just after the first episode aired, so I assumed I read it because, you know, Survivor and CBS, they don't give out spoilers. They're, they're not ones to... Come on. They're not ones to just spoil something basically for the sake of spoiling something. Um, they want to use that in the show to get people to gauge their interest and get people like excited or even at least do a uh, a kind of a commercial ending that or like the, the next time on Survivor type of deal and like reveal like there's a big twist with the idols, blah, blah, blah. Like they usually do things like that. But instead... It appears that this one, whether it be the fact that it was not supposed to get discussed and it did, whether it was not supposed to be talked about and it did, or whether Survivor has a different strategy and what they're going to do is they're going to to uh, utilize this strategy to try to gain viewership on a different front, I have absolutely no idea because I just find it strange that I read about this and it has not come into play in the show at all yet, but I guess time will tell where that actually goes how well it plays into the game my assumption is if they're gonna have talked about that they're gonna have to have like in an interview it's gonna have to play some type of role in the game otherwise it would be one of those like pointless things to talk about so i can't imagine it was just for for absolutely no reason that it was discussed but i don't know maybe it, maybe it really was and it was maybe it didn't make it into the show very well kind of like um 
not the what they do it was this the last season that they had something really crazy and special was with Dan and Dan was somebody who ended up getting the you can cast or you can steal somebody's vote and cast it for yourself and he actually used that but the season before if i recall they had the thing where it was you get two votes in this tribal and it never ended up getting played if I recall correctly, because just the circumstances didn't dictate that it needed to get played. And you had this special hidden immunity idol thing, and it wasn't it wasn't actually worth anything. Oh, Tony, it was Tony that had something. And oh God, what was it exactly that Tony had? Either way, he had some special thing that allowed him to actually, you know, do something special with the idol. And for the life of me, I can't remember what it is. I'm actually going to look it up in a minute because... I have to log off for just a second, and I'll be right back. So let me look up what that was that I'm trying to talk about and actually have a clear understanding before we continue the recap. Okay, folks, I'm back, and I just got a little bit of clarification on what I was trying to talk about with the idols, and I did give a slight misinformation in uh, in some of it. I basically was saying that, you know, Dan had used a, a, an idol that let him steal votes. It wasn't an idol at all. I, that was my mistake. It was... Uh, well, let him steal the votes was he had gotten that special ability in the auction. So that's a, a little bit different. However, I did read, I did remember this, but a little bit of history on the idols that back when the idols first went into existence, it was in what Survivor Guatemala and you used an idol to become immune from the vote. And then, which is kind of, kind of like how they work now, except at that point they were just discarded. This is very early on. And then they went to Survivor Panama, and Panama up through Cook Island, you could actually use the idol after the votes were read, kind of like I'm talking about now with this new idol with a you know, special powered idol. Uh, but So that was in the game for a while, but the contestants, or not the contestants, the fans disliked it because they said it, was, it made it too powerful. I'm getting a lot of stuff from the Survivor Wikia, by the way, just to get my facts exactly straight on this, but... And then they changed it back to kind of the format we know and love today. Granted, there's been a couple of like random exceptions with the idol. Like I said, the one I was talking about with Tony, it was one that he could use after the votes were read. He never had to use it though, because you can only use it up through or up until the like right before the final four. So basically up through final five. And he tried to use a lie because he didn't have to use it at that point. And because he, you know, it was an idol he didn't have to play until votes were cast against him. So since the votes were never cast against him, he didn't have to use it. And that's the one that he used as one of those uh, a lie. And he was like, yeah, it's a. Uh, an idol, the special powers that I can use it up through after the final four is done so that people wouldn't vote for him. Uh, that was a complete lie and a fucking brilliant lie if I, I do give the man that. That man was an amazing player. There's absolutely no way he should have won the game, though, because, um, uh, oh my god, what's his name? His Asian buddy. God, I can't remember his name. He was really cool. He was back on last season as well. Um, but he didn't... Or he brought him to the end. He shouldn't have, because he would have won otherwise. And it ended up being that Tony won. But either way. So this one, it's, yes, and it's on the Survivor Wikia as well, that for this particular season, that you can combine two idols to be able to place them and use them together after the votes are read. Now, a couple of things I think is very interesting about this. One, does it make the item extremely powerful? Yes. You do end up having to get two of them to make any use out of it, which is kind of difficult to do. But at the same time, like I said, we've seen it done on numerous occasions. But that being said, I don't know the exact rules about it yet since it's only been like first introduced. And I want to know if... Once the votes are read, if two different people... Oh, I didn't mean to make a button. If two different people who are sitting there together on, a, on the same tribe, are you then allowed to combine your idols together? Or does it have to physically come from the same person's pocket? Because basically what I want to know is... Oh, these all make the same trip. If two people on your team are sitting with idols, can you then... Instead of saying, hey, we're going to use this idol for you to save you and they're going to risk and hold on to it, but two different people have the idols now, can you just hold on to them? And if the votes are 
red and you get voted out instead of like because you it might be you know it's split between two of you guys on the team so you don't want one person to use them or to have them both and that person ends up getting voted out or the isn't the one that gets voted out and the other person gets voted out or can you make it so that the votes get red the people then give the idols to one another the person who needs it so now the person has two idols and they can use that to stay in the game like in a really strong alliance can you do that i don't know I'm curious to see where this could go because that would add a whole different amount of power to said idol because that's always what made me wonder about the other ones too. I don't remember the early seasons enough to know exactly what happened when there was enough votes that were cast against somebody with an idol when you could use it after the votes. I don't know if it ever happened. I don't remember it ever happening, but it also could have just been a long time ago since I've seen those particular episodes of Survivor. Because it makes me wonder as well, back in those seasons, if the votes were red and it's, it was like, Jeff, you have been voted out and like my buddy Bill is on the team and he throws me an idol and I'm like, no, nope, I got this idol now. So therefore those votes against me don't count because I'm allowed to use this after the votes are red. Or if it really has to be those one of those ones that's in your possession at all times. I really wish I knew the answer to that because I think this could change so much of the dynamic in this game. It's going to be it's going to be absolutely crazy. I didn't mean for these to open up in all different directions, but either way, Hidden Immunity Idol is going to have some interesting crazy powers this this season. So, I'm curious to see if they actually get played out and get used because I really want them to. I think it'd be really entertaining if they do. But anyways, on to episode two of Survivor season 32, Kai Ong, or Kai Rong, or whatever it is. Um, and it, this, of course, always, as always, it starts with them coming back from Tribal Council. Well, I can't say as always. Season one did not start like that because there was no Tribal Council. But uh, from here on out, it's, it's going to start with them, you know, coming back from Tribal Council. So they get back from Tribal Council, and Alicia, who had just been miraculously saved because they were pretty much planning on getting rid of Alicia, but instead they decided to switch it up and kick Darnell out. Alicia comes back and she's a little bit concerned because she's like, you know, Jeremy and, uh, what's her, excuse me, Jason and Jenny. She's like, I know that they were whispering. I don't know if they changed their vote to save me or if they ended up keeping their vote in the end during the second one like they tried to change their vote and it was a tie so they went back to their original vote or did they change their vote and save me at the last minute she's like i don't know so i'm worried and she's rightfully so to be worried because she was pretty much going to be out of there i still cannot comprehend exactly why they protected her i'm i'm not 100 percent sure what they are deciding that she has to offer monsters nearby where are you monsters i'm not 100 certain what they think that she has to offer and i haven't seen her really do too much in that first episode yes darnell in the first episode was the one who lost the the mask in the swimming challenge but he didn't like lose the mask and just completely do nothing he still somewhat attempted he still did better in the challenge than uh than she did i think there's i think there's a cave back here All right, you know what let's just move my bed Yep, there's a, definitely a zombie over there. So that is going to make it difficult to sleep. Can I put these on trap doors? Nope. So we'll just sleep behind the shelter. There we go. <laughs> I'm sleeping behind my shelter where things could easily come down this mountain and kill me. But it's okay. We were safe. So she definitely has a lot to be worried about. And the whole time she's sitting there talking to the people about what happened and she's trying to figure out what she's going to do to help herself stay in the game. Jason continues to just talk about how like stupid she is and how much he basically hates her and she's a dumb blonde and all he does is call her blondie. And then of course, in true, you know, survivor style, they have to do a video edit that definitely makes you think that she's a big moron, which she probably is, but she's, they're talking about the fire and they're dealing with building the fire and she starts calling <laughs> calling the embers embryos so she's like we gotta we need to keep one of these little embryos from the fire and the, i think it was jenny that she was with i can't remember was like uh you mean embers and she's like uh yeah embers embryos whatever but yeah that's a pretty pretty sad mistake to make when everybody thinks you're an idiot um i'm not saying that people don't make that mistake all the time i'm just saying when people already think that you're an idiot that's gonna be one of those mistakes that 
you don't want to show how stupid you really are. But you know what? Good for her. She's trying. She definitely decided she wanted to uh, to fit in with the group. So she's she's trying her hardest. And we'll see how that ends up playing out for her. But anyways, so moving on to the Beauty Tribe, which apparently is the Gondol Tribe. It's the only name I really caught in the season when I was watching it. There's got to be a cave, like, right here. Uh, but moving on, it moves, flashes over to the Beauty Tribe. And, of course, what Survivor does a lot of times with these uh, episodes. Oh, yeah, there's a huge cave right here. With a lot of these episodes, when they started, it's just a lot of flashing back and forth to all the different beaches um, and showing what everybody's doing before the before the challenge. So it flashes on over to the Beauty Tribe. And, again, you got Ty. Ty, Ty is that crazy little Vietnamese dude. I love that guy. He is hilarious in the episode. And the more the episode goes on, the funnier I think this dude is. But he is the one who got caught in the first episode trying to find an idol and people were a little bit sketchy of him and i don't i never understood that why people get sketchy of people on survivor when they're trying to find an idol that's a big part of the game you're only getting sketchy of this person because you're making your own alliance and trying to make it look like you're just a team player and you'd never go do something like that without them but guaranteed everybody on there if they wouldn't should go look for that idol if they get the opportunity because that's it, it's so huge in the game. I just talked about the special powers it's going to have in this season. Granted, they probably don't know that like we do early for some odd reason. But yeah, it's um everybody should be wanting to find that idol as quickly as possible. You, you need your safety net. So either way, he goes back out and he's even talking. He's like, I really shouldn't go look for the idol again. People are going to get mad at me. They already caught me once. He's like, oh, whatever. I got to go. I got to go do what I can do. So he goes out again looking for an idol and he literally finds something that's in like I, I don't know what they were thinking in this one but who knows maybe this tree is so far out of the main path that that they it took him like hours to get back to where this place is at to go find it i really have no idea because there's just this obvious yellow package in a tree in a hole in the tree but it's sticking out the side like at eye level in a clearing that makes it so easy to spot and it's just like right there and he looks at it and he's like he gets all excited because he, he found his you know he finally found his idol that he got caught looking for the the day before unfortunately it however for him it's not an idol but instead, it's a clue to an idol, which, you know, they've been doing that a lot in these seasons. Last season, it was clues to idols that they had to find in the challenge, which that's a cool twist that I like. I would actually, let, let, me, t let me tell you my idea for it. I want there to be an idol hidden at Tribal Council in either underneath the bench where you're sitting at Tribal Council or in the room where you actually write the votes, because that'll give you a second to actually look for it, but just be sitting there like underneath the urn that you put your stuff in. But most people would not think to look there, and the only reason that you would look there is if you had a clue that told you so. So you literally go in to vote at Tribal Council, and you could pick up an idol, and if you were the person that was in trouble, you could walk into the Tribal Council booth to cast your vote, catch the idol that saves you momentarily. I think that would be amazing, but that's just me having a pipe dream here. But maybe if Jeff Probst is listening, he'll listen to that and be like, hey, that would be a pretty cool idea for season 33 when Jeff's on it. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> Not going to happen, but, you know, I will. I can, I can wish and I can hope. But either way, so... It's a clue to the idol, but it's the clue is literally uh, he. There's this obvious like if if, if th this is the orange thing in the tree. I wish I had some cocoa beans to just throw it on there. It's literally it's like having a cocoa bean sitting on the side of this tree right there, and he's like, look, it's a clue to the idol. The clue that says the idol is buried below you. So he literally gets this clue and he's like, dig. Hey, look, it's the idol. Like it was. I don't understand the purpose of the clue. Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense when we get to see it a little bit more because what the idol is, or what a piece of the idol is at least, is below him was a chest that was buried, and the chest is locked, and on it was also another clue that told him that to a, it was a map to a place that had a tree that had the key on it. And again, this was kind of weird because maybe it's just the camera angles, but it was a, a straight-up tree 
without any like lower leaves. So it was like probably like 30 feet tall of just a, a tree trunk, 30 feet straight up in the air. And then the leaves start at the top and up in the near the top by near by the leaves is where this box was that he could see that is going to contain the key that he needs. And Ty is like a beast and tries to like climb the tree and go after it. He gets like halfway up and He's climbing this tree barefoot and he's just kind of like hugging it and shimmying up it. He is bleeding like he's leaving blood trails on this tree and unfortunately just can't get high enough to actually get the tree. So I'm curious to see what exactly is going to happen with Ty in this tree, but it's it's going to be really entertaining if he can actually go back and pull this off because this also just looked like it was out wide, wide open, just plain sight there's this big freaking thing tied to a tree that granted people if they found it are not going to know what it's to unless maybe there's another clue inside that says if you found this this is a key and this is where it's buried i i don't know because he never got to it so i, I started this episode talking about what's going to happen if they get two idols and so far we know where one is at but we don't know anything about what the idol actually entails if that actually is the idol the, the clue did say that that was the idol so i guess time will tell if that's really the idol um where do i need to go here i'm thinking this is one of the tribes camps i'm gonna go start working on tribal council but tribal council has to be like somewhere else and i don't know where it's gonna be they gotta take a boat to it though just why i don't know because i want them to make them work uh, so anyways, he ends up being unsuccessful and getting the, um, you know, you don't have to take a boat, but you have to, it's pretty far out here. It's not right next to camp. So anyway, he, that's what's going on over on the beauty tribe. And really it's just about Ty trying to find the, uh, the idol. So that switches over to the brain tribe. Debbie is that crazy woman I talked about last time, the one I thought I was going to be like, hey, I want to be like this chick. And then she talked and I was like, oh my God, like this chick is insane. Like she just seems to come from such this diverse and amazing background, really smart person. And she's just a freaking nut job. So I can't, I don't ever want to be like her again, but she's sitting there and she, and she's a chemist, but she's arguing with one of the people on her team because they want to boil water and she does not want to boil water because she's a chemist and she knows that there's no such thing as parasites in that water there's no way the parasites could live there and therefore she wants to uh just drink the water as it is and basically thinks everybody else is a baby for for not following suit or, or this girl that she's like getting mad at is kind of like a baby for not following suit i, I don't know it was ve it was very strange never really heard anybody in survivor yelling at other people for boiling water it's not like they that they didn't have fire i don't think i think they had a fire at the time maybe they're having problems getting fire like started or something right then i, I don't know why it was such a big deal and why they the why she was so against the boiling of water when it seemed to be something that they could just easily do right there i'm not i'm not sure on that one it was, it was like i said it was very strange didn't make much sense to me i uh just kind of i'm letting it go and leaving it at the fact that she's a nut job um but in the middle of this conversation that she's having about this person with boiling water, she talked like a schizophrenic person that has flight of ideas. And I don't know, in the medical industry, I have dealt with the real life schizophrenics that just are going on. They cannot concentrate on anything. Their ideas are so all over the place that you don't know what's going to come out of their mouth next. And you're just... You don't know how they're making the connections that they're making with everything. It's just like loose connections to everything. And it's just, it is amazing to listen to because in their mind, it like works. And it's just really insane to hear somebody who really is having flight of ideas and to hear them talk. And that's, that's what she sounded like to me. Except she was always saying stuff in the realm. I got to go back. Actually, it's getting night. I didn't bring that bed. I don't have any more wool, do I? No. Uh, but she was saying, like, just because I run 10 miles doesn't mean that you can't run 10 miles. Women with boobs shouldn't be running. You've got, you've got what'd she say? You've got good hand-eye coordination or you don't. Like, she was just talking in circles 
but it was it was all about how much better than everybody else that she was but just like throwing it all out there yes it was again editing survivor editors i'm sure did it to make it look like she was a crazy person but i don't really think they have to try that hard because i'm pretty sure she is a crazy person Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she's a crazy person. So I like her less and less every day. I disliked her after the first episode. And I like her even less now because she's just one of those people. She thinks, I don't know, maybe it's because I work with people that are like her, that everything that they do is perfect and everything that you do is wrong or subpar. And that type of attitude drives me absolutely insane. I can't stand people like that. So... I don't know, maybe it's my own bias from that that's in play, or maybe it's that, you know, she's actually as bad as I assume she is. I bet you most people with the way that Survivor edits thinks along the same lines that I do with it. It doesn't mean it's accurate or truthful, though. Whoops, I'm over here. It doesn't mean it's accurate or truthful. It just means that that's how they're editing her to look, and it could be right, it could be wrong. I don't know, you could have good hand-eye coordination, or you, or you don't. Um, if you have boobs, you shouldn't run. I mean, just the, just, you know, all the standard, the standard stuff that everybody, you know, should say on a regular basis. I don't know. She's kind of a nut job and I need to get to this bed quickly. Please don't blow up. Okay. I'm awake. Okay. Burning things, but nothing attacking me right this second. These skeletons probably will, but I'll take this creeper out in the meantime. Okay, Creeper is taken out. Uh, I came back here. I need to get some more wool so I can make another bed over there for when it turns night. But either way, so it switches back from them to the the Brains Tribe over to the Beauty Tribe. And again, <laughs> Ty is the center focus on the Beauty Tribe. And Ty very basically quickly comes out that he's gay because he's talking about his, his husband, did he say? Either his, boy, his boyfriend or his husband at home, I can't remember. But either way, he talks about you know being gay. And how Caleb is somebody who's over there. He was the guy from um the 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 the, the other, what what show was that that he was on? Uh Big Brother. He was the one that that was on Big Brother and apparently Ty and Caleb have become like best friends and they act like a married couple like they fight with each other all the time like in in funny type of playful ways and the funniest scene is Ty was showing him how to eat fish and helping him like suck out the eyeballs of fish because it was like he was telling him how it can be done there's protein from it and caleb tries it and he spits it out and says it's not for him it's you know disgusting he does he doesn't like it but but he tried it so then he's eating some fish and he's got the fish between his teeth and ty goes in he goes let me let me let me help you with that and he reaches toward his mouth and then he reaches in even farther with his mouth with his face and tries to like kiss him it looks like and caleb jumps back and he's like dude you just tried to kiss me and he's like no 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 no, no. i was just trying to help you and then it flashes to ty in the confessional and he's like i really was going in for the kiss like it was it was hilarious and it was it was funnier too because it, it, it caleb wasn't mad he thought it was funny and he was like he was like dude if you want to kiss me man just ask me and he's like oh okay and he's like the answer is no but just ask me anyways like i don't know they, they have like a cool relationship and there's such an odd couple of people to have that relationship it's like this vietnamese older vietnamese guy with this like young handsome dude from you know big brother and the reality tv series i don't know it's gonna be really to see Really interesting to see that dynamic build because it very easily could build into one of those alliances that gets them to the end, especially because I think Ty is a really likable person, even though people are a little worried about him looking for the idol. I think genuinely people like him and I think he's got one of those likable personalities, but at the same time, I don't really see what's going on on camera that, you know, they're not showing in the editing process, there could be so much stuff. He could be getting in fights with people left and right. I have absolutely no idea what's going on there. But either way, that whole thing happens over there. And it keeps flashing back and forth between the tribes a couple more times. And I do want to point out, so it finally goes to the Brains tribe and shows more than just Deb being a crazy psycho woman. And it shows Joe. So Joe is the older FBI retired guy who 
No. Julio is determined he's the one that's misplaced on that tribe. Um, I'm not sure. I think I think he can he fits right on that tribe, but I'm, I'm not. They haven't shown him enough for me to really know. The only reason I would disagree with that is he thinks that him and Deb are the only ones that are like sane and gonna get through the game because they're the only ones that really care about survival and know what they're doing and know what they're talking about and are focused and that's just insane because Deb is crazy, like I've already said. But what really caught my eye about this is he was wearing a fire department shirt and I don't remember him mentioning anything about being a firefighter. And of course I like firefighters. I'm a firefighter myself. I got to give my firefighter brother some love. And I don't recall him just saying anything about that. And I don't recall him wearing a firefighter shirt in the last episode. I'm pretty sure I would have noticed only because like look how quickly i brought it up now because i i saw it on him this time and i was like that was a firefighter shirt and i don't know he's a firefighter and julia said she didn't remember anything about that coming out either so i don't know i guess we'll find out more about that backstory at some point i do know survivor gives you clothes to wear maybe they just want to, maybe they're like you look like a firefighter even though you're not one so wear this shirt i have absolutely no idea it was kind of weird to me that where that came from but either way joe might be a guy that i have to follow a little bit more because he might be firefighter brother, so we'll find out. But back to the final tribe switch before it goes to the immunity challenge, finally. Back to the Braun tribe, and Jason is sitting there in a lot of pain because he has this crazy, ridiculous sunburn. Like, he did, obviously did not put enough sunscreen on his shoulders. It's pretty much localized, like, on his shoulders. And he talks about his shins, but I don't really see much on his shins. But he's got a pretty bad sunburn on his shoulders. And, I mean, it looks painful, and he's just laying around and talking about his, excuse me, got the hiccups, talking about his sunburn and the, the whole tribe, they have now gotten Flint because the, what I was mad about last episode is they went to tribal council. They got their Flint that Jeff gave them and they cannot seem to make a fire. Now, they have Flint. They made fire without having Flint in the episode before. And now for the life of them, they cannot make a freaking fire at all. So Alicia says, you know, I'm going to try to actually like fit into this thing. And maybe I'll just go try to make another, another tribe over here <laughs> since I'm having a tough, a tough time getting bed. So I won't be too far from where I'm at, but they, have the um well, let's make them different colors that'll work uh oh god what was i saying they um oh jesus i like lost my oh fire fire so alicia decides she's gonna go out there to try to uh make fire try to prove her worth to the tribe do something entertaining um entertaining for herself and do something like good for the tribe she works for over five hours to try to get fire she ends up being successful which is amazing but holy crap it took her five hours in order to get that first spark of fire and then on top of that five hours later she says oh my god guys i got fire get some little sticks and i'm like You've been working on building a fire for five hours and have not bothered to get yourself some kindling or something together in order to be prepared to actually get this fire going. That is the one of the absolute dumbest things I've ever heard of. And as well as that, not just her. Granted, yes, she's an idiot for that. But everybody else on the tribe who wasn't even trying, granted, there's, there is only one flint, I get it, but everybody else is on the tribe, they're not even trying to help her make this fire. Uh, nobody thinks about the fact that maybe somebody should get sticks to help out at least a little bit. Nope, not a single person. It's just sheer chaos on that tribe. I, I'm, I'm not sure how they're really going to survive, but... Long story short, they finally do get fire, but when they're getting this fire, they, oh no, no, so not, not now when they're getting this fire, they get this fire, and like the second the fire is done, 
It shows a chicken on it already. So that we missed the whole decision that they had at whatever if they made a decision point or if it was just like already determined if we get fire we're, we're cooking a chicken they freaking just like chicken instantly on the fire so one of their chickens is dead hopefully a rooster because they didn't actually show so i don't know which chicken that they had but hopefully they have a uh, a rooster is on that fire because they finally got some protein in their belly and they should be looking good for the challenge ahead right well the nice thing is finally <laughs> the next cut is the challenge unfortunately it's still just Oh, there's a sh there's some sheeps. Unfortunately, it is just the challenge. Um, the, instead of being an immunity challenge after a reward challenge, right now they're still in the phase where the immunity challenges and the reward challenges are combined into one. So this challenge, basically, they all come together. All the tribes get to see for the first time that they got rid of Darnell and they didn't get rid of uh, Alicia. And they're the, yeah, I can't tell uh, how shocked they really are at that. Like, I don't think they know that team enough to know what the dynamic was going on. So, of course, they come walking up and everybody's like, oh, because he's like, get a look at your, the you know, everybody else is getting their first look at the new Braun tribe. And everybody's like, oh, my God. But you don't know what they're really thinking. So, I, I, I really think they were like, I can't tell who's missing. There was another person over there. I did. I don't know who it was. I'm pretty sure that was more of their, uh their thought process then than that oh yes i got three wood that means i can put this down here let's make a table get a bed ready because it's going to be night again soon um so this challenge is a, like i said it's for reward as well as for immunity the reward in this particular challenge is amazing it's a fishing kit like and this is a what he says is it's like the ultimate fishing kit that you will be you should be able to feed yourself for like the rest of your life with this fishing fishing kit as well as a boat. So the fishing kit comes with a boat, which is pretty awesome. So the winning tribe is going to have a boat at their island and this full fishing kit. The secondary tribe, or the team that comes in second, is going to get a smaller fishing kit. But obviously they will have immunity. And the third team, nothing. They're going to tribal council to see Jeff. And somebody will be voted out. So anyways... It is to race into a river, carry this big log through obstacles. He keeps taking, saying the log weighs like 300 pounds, but 300 pounds isn't really that big of a deal when you got five of you guys carrying it. I mean, granted, I'm sure during a challenge and everything gets heavy and it was long and the obstacles were actually much longer than I thought originally when, um, I, I mean, physically longer uh, when he was showing the challenge at the beginning. It looked like it was pretty short, but it was pretty extensively long so i can see where the difficulty is but i don't think the weight was really that big of a deal because i mean 300 pounds between five people is really not that much and half the challenge was in the water so the log was like halfway floating so i don't think weight was that big of a deal but so you carry this log through a bunch of these crazy obstacles like ducking in and out and over gates and things like that in the water and then you have to untie there's a rope tied around it with a like a bean bag on the end when you get to the end, you have to untie that and use that as a slingshot to knock over these two targets. And he said it's supposed to be difficult because if your like, rope is tangled at all, you're not going to have enough room to get the rope to the target. So relatively short challenge all in all, especially compared to the last one, but still rel kind of extensive and a lot, a lot of things that had to get, um, to get done and people having to work together and everything to make that happen. So... But th that's what the challenge is, so pretty much that's the challenge. Ready, set, go. And first off, i got to scroll down a little bit in my document here. First off, the Brawn Tribe is in the lead, and the Brain Tribe falls, like, really behind. I don't even know exactly what they stumbled on. I, I, don't, I think it was just, like, coordinating themselves and getting everybody together, but they, they just struggled pretty pretty significantly bad at the very beginning of that thing and it was kind of entertaining to watch because the brains drive i just i don't know I, I always like it when the and this is just kind of me being sadistic i always like it when the brains tribe does poorly because especially at challenges that would that involve coordination and not just like speed and being like stronger than somebody else because that's supposed to be what those people are good at right but it 
not always is going to be the case. And obviously you're going to have some problems. And I think, you know, the brain, anytime we've seen super smart people on a tribe together, they've always just like failed miserably. I think they've, they've only done brains, beauty, brawn once, but the brains tribe in that one just got desecrated as well. So every time you see a tribe that everybody feels is stronger than the other ones, it never does end well for them. So maybe I don't ever want to be on a brains tribe if I'm there. You'd think, you'd just think it'd be so different, but it just never is. But either way, the Brains Tribe is struggling at the beginning, and the uh, the Brawn Tribe is, like, first out of the gate. So it looks like they're finally going to make up from that, you know, piss poor showing that they had in the one before. But kind of as, as the challenge is going on, it's flashing back and forth between all the tribes pretty quickly, so it's really hard to see exactly what's happening. And the next thing you know... The beauty tribe is all of a sudden at the slingshot area, getting ready to shoot their slingshot kind of out of nowhere. And they get it up there. However, it's super knotted up. So they're having problems. They're, they're first ones there, which I, I don't, like I said, I don't know when they took the lead, but they get there first. Their slingshot, their rope is all tangled up and therefore they can't actually start getting some shots off with it. And they get i don't know i i was i'm reading my document and trying to like quantify how to put this into words braun was in front before you know it beauty is sitting at the obstacle trying to get their slingshot untied because their first one's there but their slingshot is all knotted up so they're losing ground and all of a sudden they're still the first ones that get a target knocked over so the, the whole thing was really strange and i don't know if it was just cinematic in the way that it was like done or what but i think they even tried to show that the brawn tribe was the first one with a slingshot like they shot showed them shooting the slingshot and showed their target going down and they were like brawn tribe has one but you could see to the left of it that the beauty tribe already had one knocked down so i don't even remember if he actually said beauty tribe was there with it first but the beauty tribe is the first one that had the uh the thing knocked down but anyway then the brawn tribe gets one it's back and forth for a minute. Beauty Tribe ends up kind of getting two pretty quickly. Beauty Tribe wins again. So Beauty Tribe is going to walk away not only with immunity yet again, but with this huge fishing kit and this like boat and things like that. And I think Ty is going to be a master fisherman. And maybe that's because I'm racist and uh, it's because he's Vietnamese. And therefore, I assume that that's the case. I'm really not racist at all, but maybe I'm stereotyping. Um... So I don't know if that's exactly why I would think that. But, I mean, it seems, I don't know, it just seems very Survivor-esque for that to be the case. So time will tell if that's actually the truth thing. I need this up one more. Let's do that. Yeah, let's try Let's try this like this, this height. We'll see how that goes. But either way, Beauty Tribe wins. Out of nowhere, Brains Tribe goes in second place, which means that yet again, for the second Tribal Council in a row, you are going to have the Brawn Tribe going to Tribal Council to lose yet another person. And I don't, I don't know if I like it when I see that the same tribe is going to go back to tribal council or not at the very beginning i kind of like it to be a little bit more even but at the same time i mean obviously obviously they earned it so i i don't want to be like oh i feel bad for them so therefore i don't want them to go again that they're not doing that well and they have some dead weight they need to get some teamwork and stuff together so it's kind of a good thing that they're going back because maybe they'll be able to work on that teamwork and stuff at some point but at the same time i just don't like to see teams get desecrated to the point where it's going to be more like a uh the season with i think deb was her name where deb ends up going to every single tribal council in existence she ends up winning the game, but she went to every single tribal council in existence because she was just on the losing tribe from the very beginning every single time. And it was just like, that was the one with Malcolm. Um, and it was, I don't know, it, it was kind of like sad to see and amazing to see her win. But oh my God, just the, I don't know. It's just, it's really bad to watch just one team get decimated so bad. So either way, they're going to go to tribal council. Now, normally, I wouldn't think too much of the fact that they're going to Tribal Council. Because 
I'm sure that Alicia is going to be the one that's going. She's the one that everybody hates. But Jenny is getting a little fed up with Jason and all the smack talk that he's been doing against Blondie. She's like, all he does is sit over there and call her Blondie and make fun of her. That's all he does all day long. It is, uh, it's not funny. He's childish. She's not grown up. Like, I don't want that, you know, somebody like that over here. And she gets the, the other girl on the team, the bodybuilder. I cannot remember her name for the life of me. But gets her, Seer, Cindy? Is it Cindy? It might be Cindy. But he gets her on board. And then they pull in Alicia. And they're like, hey, look. You know, let's team up as girls. Let's do a girls alliance instead of having this other alliance. They're going to start picking off the guys when we get over there anyway, over to uh, the merge. This way we can kind of solidify something now. I know we'd rather, we'd like to win challenges right now, but if we keep, you know, our big basketball player dude, we'll at least have a chance at winning some challenges. We'll get rid of, you know, Jason and we'll have a better bond and a better alliance and all this stuff. And of course, Alicia's on board because she's like, oh yeah, I'm about to go home. I'm going to, you know, jump at any opportunity I can, I can get at this to actually have a chance to stay in this game. So she's on board. Cindy's on board. I believe Cindy's her name. And it seems like it's going to be good to go. Jason's sure that they're all going to be like confident with each other. And then the other guy is like, it's like, yeah, yeah, they got it. They got to be with us. Like there, there's no way that they can be against us. So then Jenny flips again before they even go to tribal council. She pulls the other girl aside. And she's like, look, 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 I was wrong. I, I jumped into conclusions too fast. I, I shouldn't have done that. Like, no, no, no. Let's stick with our original plan. I don't want to do that to Jason. Oh, Scott, I believe is his name. Um, uh, what is his name? Feels like she'd be blind. Yeah, yeah, Scott. And then she says, because Scott is a, apparently her good friend, she says that she feels like it would be blindsiding Scott if she were to get rid of Jason, which it really would be um, for a big move, though. Uh, so she doesn't want to do it anymore because if she blindsides Scott and, you know, betrays his trust, then she's going to have even more problems and doesn't want to put him in that position so she wants to go back so cindy's getting a little upset with her because cindy's like hey look you uh i i don't i don't know what's going on i don't know if i can trust this girl anymore she's a little crazy she's uh more than a little bit crazy she's just talking all over the place if she's gonna just be flip-flopping back and forth that much right away like there's no way that i can trust her so maybe we need to you know figure out what's going on here so you kind of go to tribal council and like with this kind of like, huh, I wonder what's going to happen. Like, this is going to be kind of interesting, kind of crazy. And Tribal Council opens, and you would think that it kind of... Hi, cow. Do you like the house? Yeah, you like it. I know. I know. Uh, you'd think it would start out crazy, like Jeff Probst pulling information out of people to find out that there's, like, thoughts going on. Oh, but no. Jenny puts her foot in her mouth. From the second Tribal Council starts, and everybody else is sure, all the guys are sure that she was completely solid in their alliance and their plan, and she's the one that opens her mouth, and she's like, well, of course I thought about other options. Why wouldn't I think about other options? Who knows? I'm swaying back and forth. Like, who knows what I should do? And they're like, excuse me? Like, this is the first time we're hearing that you were thinking about actually going a different direction. And, of course, she gets all defensive because she's like, She's like, oh, no, 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 I was just saying that. Why are people mad at me? Of course, I got to think about this. She, I fully agree that everybody in who plays Survivor, everybody in the game, you should always be thinking of other options. Doesn't mean you're going to take the other options. You always have to have a strategy. Your alliance that you're in, they might start to flip on you. So you, no matter what, have to be prepared with a backup strategy. You can't just take everything at face value in this game. It doesn't mean you're going to go against what you're saying, but you can't let your alliance know that you're thinking other directions about things as well because that's also going to be a problem. It's a game. It's a strategy, social skill. Like That's what that game is. That's why it's hard for people but they always end up either going about it wrong or getting caught and not knowing how to get themselves out of the hole that they've dug and just keep digging holes deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's exactly what she did is she just started digging herself a deeper and deeper hole. And Alicia steps in and says, you know, yeah, this was brought up about getting you know us the girl uh, having a girls alliance and the girls staying together and jenny was like 
yeah, you're the one who brought it up to me. That's why I was talking about it. And I wasn't really talking about doing it. I was just actually trying to let you have a good day for your last day on the island. Like, that's what one thing she actually says is I was lying to her so that she would have a good day for her last day on the island because that's the kind of person I am, is what she told her tribe mates. And Alicia was like, well, no, she's the one who approached me about this. And basically, Jenny dug herself the biggest hole in the in the world and it fed people up enough to the fact that jenny went home she went home however not before trying to get the beg the tribe for forgiveness she makes them stop and stands up she's like stop 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 hold on and she turns around and she stands up on the bench and throws her arms in the air like a fucking crazy woman. And is like, oh God, please let this alliance come back to the original alliance. And Jeff Probst is even like, this is the first time anybody's ever done something like that in this in, in this room before. Because Jeff Probst is smart enough to know that that's a crazy person. And that everybody else saw that as that she's a crazy person. And therefore, she is going to get voted out. I mean, writing was on the wall. The second she walked in there and said anything, I mean, she blew her own cover. And did so, I don't even think, realizing that it was going to be an issue and that's why it's very apparent that she just does not know how to play the game and was not going to last very long and i actually i thought she was going to last a, a while i thought she was going to do pretty well um after she dealt with the whole bug in her ear incident in the previous episode i thought she was going to come back like a champ and just be like one of those one of those edits that they did where it's like hey look at this person they can barely cut it they're having all these problems like there's a bug in her ear and she's dry it's driving her nuts and then just gonna show her at the end is like look what she came from to win this game type of deal or at least to get super far in this game but nope episode two see you later baby she's out the door so survivor recap episode two i was really hoping to see some idols grabbed or at least have the double idol thing discussed i have only seen the fact that that's going to happen in like i said the interview that i read and then just recently on the survivor wikia um i really want to understand what's going to happen with the idol so somebody suggested i do like predictions for the next season i think that the bronze tribe or the next episode i think that the bronze tribe is not going to lose again I think they're going to come in second place in a challenge. I think it's going to be close. And I think it's going to be because one of the other tribes really messes up at the end and kind of like opens the door for them to come in and, and actually have a win to not have to send somebody home. And I'm not sure what team that is. I'm concerned it's going to be the beauty team and that they're going to want to get rid of Ty because like I said, I, I, I'm a little... I'm a little worried on their true thoughts of what Ty is. I think he's a good personality that everybody likes. I hope, I hope that's the case, but I'm worried about that. I think in the next episode, though, Ty is going to go get that. I at least get that thing from the tree. Um, oh, I do need to make this thing bigger, don't I? I think he's going to go get the thing from the tree. However, I think he's going to get caught when he's trying to dig up the box for the idol. Uh, that is what I think is going to happen is that he's... Not going to completely, that's the wrong thing, not going to completely get that idol. People are going to find out. I think that's what ultimately is going to send Ty home. He's going to try to get the idol. He's going to get caught. And that's going to be the end of Ty. So that's what I think is going to happen in the next episode. I could be absolutely off base. I hope I'm absolutely off base because I like Ty. I like that dude. Anyways, guys, Survivor Recap, Episode 2. I'm amazed you guys want to listen to me ramble for like the hour I just took to say this. But if you're, if you're still enjoying it, I'll still be doing the recaps because I love Survivor. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you next week after Survivor.